minutes ago, we heard of an example of people power when a minister backed down and Kunla comes back to do his leaving cert. But the most astonishing example of people power we've seen on this island happened in recent weeks when an ordinary Belfast family, against a background of threats and intimidation, stood up to face the IRA and Sinn Féin. Will you welcome, please, the sisters of the late Robert McCartney, Catherine, Paula, Gemma, Donna and Claire. Very welcome. Gemma, how are you? Oh, don't worry about your microphone, we'll sort that out. If you sit on it, it'll still work. You're all very welcome. Um, thank you very much for coming to, to, to do uh, The Late Late Show. Um, I wanted to try and get a sense of Robert, first of all. What sort of a fellow was he? Well, Robert was a very well-respected fellow. He was one of life's gentlemen and a uh, very dedicated father. Uh, he just lived for his two little boys, Connolly and Brandon, and he'd be f he's very sadly missed. Yeah. Um, he was always working at one thing or another. He wasn't a, a fellow who was afraid of work. Oh, not a f very hard-working man. He worked solely for his family. He was yeah. a forklift driver. That was his full-time job. And then the weekend, job. he would have did the door and a few nightclubs yeah. just for extra money because they were saving enough to get married. He obviously stayed in shape, uh, I've seen from the pictures, he was, yes. you know, very fit. Uh -huh. and um, he loved weight trading and have been doing that for a lot of years, and he was very, um, action movies, he loved action movies, Arnold Schwarzenegger was his hero, along with Bruce Lee, and Brandon's actually named after Bruce Lee's son, Brandon, right. so that's where that came from. That's where that came from. Um, I know Bridget can't be with us tonight because yes. uh, she has uh, an illness in her family which mm -hmm. she wants to, to uh, look to but Bridgine and Robert were actually going to tie the knot this year is that right? That's right July they had set a date to be married in July and had their venue and that picked. So that would have been a mm -hmm. uh, fantastic mm -hmm. day for your yeah, family. Yeah would have. Um, we, we all know of the gruesome way in which your brother died and there's no point in going over that but given the nature of what happened and where it happened and how it happened you must have assumed that very quickly there would be arrests and things would be you know would come to a head. There would be a judicial process and uh, a conviction. Yes, but we assumed the next day, that the day Robert died, he died in ten past eight in the Monday morning. He had been stabbed on the Sunday evening, but he survived through until the next morning. We knew the next day who it was who had murdered him. And you knew? Yes. And, and how, who told you? I mean, how did you find out so quickly? One of his friends was with him and he told me the um, related story um, at, at the intensive care whenever Robert was stabbed. He uh, told the um, initial story of what he had seen and witnessed. And, and just to explain to Stana how the, the, you know, would you know everybody in the neighborhood? Is that the kind of yeah. place yes, the short stand is? is? Yeah, very yeah. close. And the markets as well. And the markets. So yeah. you would have known anyone who, who was in that A good 80% of people, we would, would have known them, yeah. Or, so, so when nothing happened, how did you react to, to if you like, the, the deafening silence? Well, um... We didn't get Robert home because of the nature of his death until the Friday. He died on Sunday and his body didn't go home to Friday. So we didn't, he didn't, wasn't buried until the following Tuesday. So um, we were just hoping that the police, if they had made a few arrests, but these people just went in and then were let out again. And it wasn't then until um, after his funeral we decided to appeal for help on the radio because we realised that 70 people were not telling what they knew. Uh, wh when did you hear about the, the cleaning up operation that actually happened? Well, when we asked the police to explain why these people had been allowed to leave, they said that there had been a clean-up forensically, like a military-style operation, clean-up in the bar. Um, so you knew names, you knew what happened, you'd, you'd chapter and verse on all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, at any point did you start saying to the police, come on, you've got to do something, or did you understand from the beginning the police's did the PSNI's difficulties? Well, it was the forensic, sorry, there was a forensic clean-up that took place in the bar which made it very difficult for the police to... Um, so you weren't uh, pointing the finger at them and, and saying, no, look, you're not doing no, your jobs? No, no, no. And there has to be remembered that a percentage of the people in the bar that night were intimidated, but there was also a very large majority in it who were either Sinn Féin members or indeed their workers. In, in the past, as, as a family, if you had some difficulty, would you have gone to Sinn Féin, to uh, Jerry Kelly or someone like that and said, look, we have a difficulty, can you help us? 
Well, fortunately, n nothing like that ever arose. No, I, I mean, say family. something that you needed uh, the help of the state for, for example, and you go to an MLA and say, look, can you help us? Would, you, would that have been your instinct to look for political help, for example? Other than the police, you mean? No, about, not about a policing matter, mm. about, uh, you know, a, some matter that would involve government in some way. Yeah, yeah well, I suppose we would have thought nothing of going to one of those members. So when you went on this occasion to Jerry Kelly, what was his response? We didn't go to Sinn Féin. They, um, they came to us because the initial response from Sinn Féin was they put it down on the Monday that Robert died to a knife culture. And then the next day when the police went into the markets area to investigate the murder, a uh, riot was orchestrated by the local IRA. And Alex Maskey got on TV to condemn the police for using heavy-handed tactics. So we became aware very quickly that this was not going to be a clean-cut case of here are these people, the police are going to be able to arrest them. When you say they started disseminating this thing that, the, that Robert had died because of a knife culture, mm -hmm. what was the reaction when you heard that about your own brother? I we already knew, sorry, what happened to Robert. It had already been told the night it happened, what happened, yeah. and, and who done it. But the fact that people were spreading a lie mm -hmm. about your brother, that he was, in, he was some kind of a guy who carried a knife no. and there was a fight and he, he, he kind of wished trouble on himself. No, no. There was no, Robert didn't have any knife. The knife was obtained, obtained from the kitchen in McGuinness's bar. Yeah. Well, we, all, we know that now, yeah, Robert but they, no, they no were knife. suggesting that this was all part of knife culture. No. They were suggesting that it was a pub brawl, and to this day there are still suggestions. It is still described in papers and such as a pub brawl, when in fact what it was was an attack, attack. on an two men. An egotistical attack. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the IRA have their own rules and their own way of behaving, <laughs> and I know that you've been critical of the way the IRA have changed since the, the peace process started. Uh, you know, you expected it to be very different to the way it's tur turned out to be. But were you surprised at the way Sinn Féin reacted to your uh, pleas for help? Well, we, we, acknowledged, we, we acknowledged their endeavour into um, and what they did, you know, asking people to come forward and Jerry Adams said himself, he not rest until this is settled. We're just, we're disheartened that nobody has come forward and that that bar was full of Sinn Féin members and IRA members. And they, they're obviously not um, heeding their, their leader's um, request, directions. Now, th th there obviously was um, someone in the bar that night who potentially could be in a government in the future. Absolutely. This is Cora Grugan. Yeah. Cora Grugan, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what part did she play in all of this? Well, she witnessed the, the key attack on Brenton Devine when he got his throat cut. She left the bar at approximately 20 past 11, a small bar with two toilets, one male toilet and one female toilet. She had initially told the Sinn Féin office in the Falls Road that she left at half past eight. Fortunately, a taxi driver overheard her conversation at 20 past 11. He brought her to the Hatfield bar, describing the events that she witnessed inside. Martin McGuinness is trying to say that she didn't. Two weeks later, she came. Why did she not phone up the, the next day and go to the police or phone for an ambulance? This girl could be sitting on the policing board in a couple of, months, a couple of years' time. So she actually changed her version she of the changed events. her story, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, when Jerry Adams came to see you, and you say you, 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 you're grateful for the fact that he appealed to people to tell w what they knew, I mean, were you in any way cynical about uh, the agenda that Sinn Féin might have had at that point? Well, we're very worried that they're a political party and that any democratic political party is going to find it difficult that their members are in a bar in which in where a man is murdered. That is going to cause difficulties for any political party. But looking at it from a justice issue, if I was in that party or if I was in that leadership of that party, I would certainly take disciplinary action against any member who refused to cooperate to get justice for his family. Now, they did suspend uh, people from membership. They suspended seven members for their alleged involvement. They did not suspend seven members for refusing to cooperate with the ombudsman or the police. And they haven't expelled or suspended any other members for not cooperating. So, have you become cynical? I mean, you were at the, the uh, Sinn Féin Ardèche. Your picture was shown probably halfway across the world with Gerry Adams. Do you think you were used in any way? No, I well, don't think we were used in any way. What I think is we went down to the Ardèche to, because we knew that a lot of Republicans and Nationalists, and indeed everyone in Ireland, believes that this is a case of murder and that these people should be brought to court. We went down to the Ardèche through invitation from Gerry Adams um, and we got a very warm, warm welcome from the delegates in that hall. They, I believe, are more representative of the people mm -hmm. in this country yeah. than the people who murdered Robert on that night. 
So I don't feel that we were being used by that. And, you know, we certainly weren't using them either. We were going down because we need the help of everyone in this country. Uh, did you feel, uh, when, when this uh, movement started, it's a family movement, I mean, and you're determined to go all the way with this, did you feel uh, patronised in any way along, along the way by various people because you were, you know, six women, uh, Bridgine and the five of you? Did you feel that maybe they underestimated you a bit? Well, Martin McGuinness's statement certainly sort of, you know, insinuated that we were, you know, there's somebody pulling our strings, that statement he made about, you know, to back, basically to invert a commas back off out of politics, we find that patronising and, you know, we underestimated our intelligence. When you met the members of the IRA who came to visit you, um, did they know what they were facing into when they came to meet you as a family? You know, I, th I think they were expecting six hysterical women. Yeah. And when you explained your point of view to them and what you wanted mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. what was their reaction? Well, they we said that they were trying to help us. Initially when we, we met the IRA for the first time, we thought that the only problem why 70 people weren't talking was because everyone in that bar felt intimidated. And we went to talk to them, they asked them that if there was intimidation going on, that it had to be lifted, and it had, they had to do something on the ground, but was going around personally and speaking to people, but it had to be lifted. That was what we went to speak to them about, and they assured us that they would help us in to try and do that. Do you believe it's happened? It hasn't happened at all because so many people are still not talking. They saw nothing and they heard nothing. And that is this still more or less the statements. So the they're afraid? Have. Some, of them, some of them are afraid, obviously, but I, when you consider the clientele of the bar, to us now we feel that there's more going on than just pure intimidation. Someone's being protected. Something's, something's being, being protected some, or something. Being protected. Um, w when you gave the list of names to Gerry Adams of the people that you were told were involved, mm -hmm. there was one kind of anomaly that struck you that there was one person that he said he didn't know? No, that wasn't... No, I was think there was, there's, a, there's a bit of a confusion over that. He didn't say that he didn't know that the a person that was mentioned, he, he omitted to say that he knew him, if you know what I mean. Oh, yes, he didn't say, oh, yeah. yes, that yeah. guy I know because... And why, did, why should he have known this guy? Oh, well, th th this guy was actually a personal minder. Your decision to go to America when you got the invitation, um, was it an easy decision to make, to say, yes, we will go for St. Patrick's Day, we will meet uh, President Bush? No, because I had said at the very start, and this was, uh, I think, second week in, when it became public on what had happened to Robert, that we would go anywhere and speak to anyone. It really just was um, regarding time and St. Patrick's Day, you know, and everything, but, you know, we didn't have any doubts no. about going. So people have the impression maybe um, that this was a, a five-star trip, you know, all expenses paid, luxury hotels. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. What uh, was the reality, Donna? Well, I slept on the floor. You slept on the floor? She yeah. complained about we had to pay for the breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and you were wearing borrowed duds and... That's right. Yeah. The yeah. Aunt's yeah. Yeah. Clothes, yep. So it wasn't like... Uh, it was not know, like, people not like, like people it. No. What about the criticism? Um, you know, some people say, look, you're, you're complaining about IRA uh, terrorist intimidation. On the other hand, you're going off to meet someone who's you know, responsible for mm -hmm. terror in Iraq. And so what do you say to that kind of criticism? Well, again, as I said, uh, we went over to meet um, a lot of people in America, senators and congressmen, and it just happens that um, George Bush happens to be the president at the moment. If it had, a, it wouldn't, wouldn't matter who was in. If it was Hillary Clinton in, who might be in the next time, you know, we went over to meet her, we would have met Bill Clinton. And it doesn't Young matter, he's just a symbolic head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In you know. other words, you have your agenda, which yeah. is to yeah. find yeah. justice Jerry for Robert. Jerry, 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 Jerry Jerry only wasn't invited. There. He's mm -hmm. been there before. Yeah. Last year, was he not there? But your point was to, to get your message across yeah, yeah, yeah. about that, what was happening. This was about what's happening to us, not about what's, you know, happening nothing else. What's what, us. We want justice for our brother. Yeah. Um, the whole question of going up for election, have you decided to go or no, not? No, we've decided to withdraw. Focus on the campaign. Now, what, why? Well, we we'll think our energies would be better spent on the campaign. Obviously, for standing, you would have to be distracted in the other issues, and we really can't afford it. Do, do you think that it could get very dirty if you did stand? I think it's very dirty. Well, it yeah, could it's get any more dirty, dirty than it is now. Yeah. Really? But, I mean, the things that were being said about you as a family, that, you know, someone behind you, that it's a, a former IRA man yeah. who has yeah. a vendetta now against yeah. republicanism, that he's the one, he's the yeah. puppeteer. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. say to that? It's nonsense. Well, again, it's, it's probably uh, this thing about six women not being able to think for themselves and express themselves. 
we can assure everyone that the only man, because that's obviously who they're looking for behind this, is Robert. Uh, you don't like being patronised as women, no. but at the same time, if it had been five guys who were looking for justice for their brother's death, I mean, perhaps they might have suffered the same fate as mm -hmm. Robert, mm -hmm. but you are untouchable, maybe because you're women. Well, at the moment anyway, I mean, these people can buy their time, but um, I think it's very sad that men, particularly there's men who have said it to us, you know, that it, five men wouldn't be able to do it because they'd be shot dead. And I think that it's very sad that men in, in the north of Ireland wouldn't even be able to stand up and fight for justice. But that may be the reality, that yeah. they feel they could be targeted yeah. and, and maybe things said about them mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as justification for, mm -hmm. their, mm -hmm. for their deaths. Uh, where does it go from here? I mean, when you're off the front pages, I mean, you're still very much prominent. Um, Claire, wh where do you think it will take us? Well, we'll have um, other things planned. We'll have a rally organised. Um, we're in regular contact with the uh, senators and congressmen that we met in America, just for just they're updating them on the pro and well, there is no progress, but if there is, we're updating them and they're giving their support and we have we're planning, hoping to meet the likes of Nelson Mandela, just to highlight and push the campaign forward if need be, if nothing else happens. I mean, do you, do you feel any weight of history on your shoulders? People are saying that you have done what Tony Blair couldn't do, what yeah. Bertie Ahern couldn't do. No. In other words, to, to make um, the IRA and Sinn Féin perhaps look at themselves and see what parts of that broader Republican movement have become, you know, rather mm -hmm. distasteful, ugly, um, Criminal. nasty people who don't stand for what you stand mm -hmm. for. Yeah, well, I, yeah well, I would say so, yeah. But we can't really see it, you see, because we're on the inside looking out. I think yeah. never, our, our respectively we'll see it. Our sole purpose is ensuring that the people who murdered Robert are brought before a court and put behind bars where they belong. And that's that, our, again, our only say, agenda. That's because we know who these people are. Have, have you seen them yeah, around the street? Yeah, we pass them every day the street. You pass them yes, every day yeah. in the street? Yes. Uh -huh. And are yeah. they uh, shamefaced? Are they no. eyes cast down as you pass well, them? Well, some of them would, some of them would cast. The one I passed yesterday, he was standing at his window, and whenever I passed, he moved away from the window. And this is somebody that I grew up with from a child, who who could have saved our Robert's life that night. And and others are not in any way shamefaced, but they, they almost flaunt what they've done, do they? They're sort of, um, I would say, they're safer in numbers. They're sort of gather and um, could, are you on a united front? You see, they have, because of the constitution of that bar, Sinn Féin members and IRA members coming back from the dairy commemoration and the forensic clean-up, they're very complacent in their security. They know that there can never be a forensic link. Yes. Yeah. The only mm -hmm. link there can be is an eyewitness account. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And they're very confident that yeah. that yeah. will yeah. not that's happen. Not happen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you believe there's any particular person being protected in all of yes, this? Yes, we know who it is. And you know, and, and yeah. why? We don't know why. No. We don't know whether maybe he knows things. We don't know. But he's been protected. You mean that if he is put in the dock, mm -hmm. he that he squeal. has things to say mm -hmm. that might embarrass other people? Yeah, Absolutely, yes. That's the only conclusion we can draw on. It might be the wrong one, but mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, there's certainly some block stopping those 70 witnesses from speaking. And if the IRA are saying that it is not, that they are not going to intimidate anyone, and they're saying it publicly, they've said it in statements. You know, there's something stopping witnesses coming forward, and we don't believe it's because they will not, will not cooperate with the PSNI, because also the ombudsman is there. If they don't want to go speak to the police, they can speak to the ombudsman. They are not doing that either, so we don't believe it's um, there's something stopping people from coming forward. Do you fear at all for your own safety? No. 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 It just no. doesn't enter your heads. No. no. The only thing we fear is that, that these people aren't brought before court. Any progress at all, finally? No. 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 None. Nothing. So far to date, anyway, that we, there's been nothing. But we're seeking legal advice on a civil action. And that will bring things to a yeah. Yes. But it's taking, in the meantime, a toll on your family, I'm sure. Yeah, on yeah. All we your haven't families. even started yeah. the grief. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, thank you very much for coming down and talking to us on the Late Late Show tonight. Um, thank you. Claire, and Donna, and Gemma, thank you. Catherine, Paula, thank you very much. Thank, for you. Being. thank you so much. All right, we're going to. Uh, I'm going to with uh, some music.